Inca's sitting on the corner of a bed where this hellebore is coming into bloom. Uh, it's one I've had for, gosh, could be close to 10 years now. And it's in this bed that during the summer months has uh, Love in the Mist. You can see here's Love in the Mist. And there are seeds, so I can let them go. But anyway, this area is full of these um, different flowers, the dead bits, which I leave for most of the winter so that the insects... Oh, look, you've come now too, haven't you? So most of the insects can... Uh, sorry, insects and birds can uh, feed off the seeds. And there's still seeds left over, as you can see, from this Love in the Mist. So I'll just put them back in the bed and hopefully that will start creating a cycle of self-sowing. But the reason why I have this hellebore here is because I have this wonderful Japanese maple here with that wonderful red trunk. And when you're coming out here, you can't see the red trunk for all the dead stuff that I've been leaving for the birds and the insects. So I'm gonna collect that stuff up and clear it so that then you will see the red of the dogwood with the red of this hellebore. And I'm not composting these, all these, um, not putting them in the compost heap because when hibernation occurs these stalks if you can see they're hollow and a lot of insects small insects will have gone in to hibernate in the hollows that are in these uh, stalks they could be small caterpillars uh, beetle larvae all kinds of things and I want to keep the biodiversity going. So I will clear these out. You can see I started there, there's a pile. And I leave them lightly. Oh, look. Oh, look. These are, pollinator has arrived. Where is it? I just heard it arrive. Let me see. There it is. And there you have an uh, Irish native black honeybee. That's a native honeybee pollinating this hellebore. So that's the other reason why I have the hellebores is for pollen at this time of year. Why I also have crocuses and the crocuses are coming out like bilio, which is fantastic. But I love that um, the pollinators are here as I'm talking about. Oh, it's gone. Never mind. I gave it a fright. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you the before and then I'll show you the after of this particular flower bed uh, when I clear out all this dead stuff. Okay. Now you can see um, the red of the trunk of the Japanese maple. And in a few years time, when this red hellebore gets a bit bigger, I will dig it up and divide it by three and spread, oh look, another pollinator has arrived. There you go, at work. So that's the other reason besides the beauty of having um, hellebores and all different varieties around the garden. Anyway, I've cleared this up and I have one more job to do. This is, well, yeah, and you're coming to help me, aren't you? All the dogs. This is my pile and I have to, can you move there? I have to dig up. These are oxide daisies and these are the primroses and they're really, really big. So what I'm going to do, this is the native kind of primrose, the low-lying one, this is the primrose that goes up about three or four feet in height with the big yellow flowers. 
Uh, I want to keep these in this bed, but I'm going to dig that out and that out, the oxide daisies and the evening primroses, and I'm going to move them to a different location. You can see there's quite a few of the oxide daisies and the evening primrose, and over there where Inca is, there's some very big evening primroses. So I'm going to dig those out, and there's lots of little ones over there. I'm going to dig those out and transplant them elsewhere so that the seeds that grew will be able to contribute somewhere else, but not where I want them. These are these will all grow out beautifully and flower, and they flower pink flowers, which reflect again on the Japanese maple trunk. So I'm trying to make this bed kind of always contribute to that. So there's kind of pinks and purples and things like that. Anyway, I'm going to get to work digging up the uh, oxide daisies and transplanting them. Isn't that right, pup? So this bed is looking very naked now. I've weeded out most of the seedlings. You can see they're all right here. Yes. And, oh, look, I want to put that back in. That is something I want to keep. So I'll put that back in. But um, all these other ones, these are baby daisies, oxide daisies. You can see their roots are all right here. And because it's early enough in the season, I can plant them out in a field or near a field. In, I'm going to plant them in one of my tree plantations. So there will be loads of oxide daisies. And then they can all, and primroses. See, there's the evening primrose. And they can all then just keep re sowing themselves naturally, like they were doing here. Because this bed at one stage was just oxide daisies. And I wanted to make it a little bit different. So now I'm having a dog tussle. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to bring this bucket out and I'll show you where I'm going to plant them. And then hopefully we'll be able to see all of these take off during the growing season. Isn't that right, puppers? Clever dogs.